On this day in 1985, Celtic played Atletico Madrid in the European Cup Winners' Cup behind closed doors. The European Cup Winners' Cup first round second leg clash against Atletico Madrid on the 2nd of October 1985 was played behind closed doors as a result of the rapid Vienna fiasco the previous season. Celtic lost 3-1 in Vienna on the 24th of October 1984 with Alan McAnally being sent off but produced one of their best European performances of the decade in the return at Celtic Park on the 7th of November, beating the Austrians 3-0 in a bad-tempered match in which Rapid threatened to walk off the pitch. Unfortunately, after they protested vehemently about a second-half penalty awarded to Celtic, forcing a weak referee to consult his linesman in front of the jungle, a bottle was thrown onto the pitch. A Rapid player went to ground in instalments, clutching his head despite the bottle having missed him by yards but he left the ground, head swathed in bandages, after Rapid officials refused to allow any of the ambulance men present to see the so-called injury. Rapid appealed to UEFA, who ordered a replay at least 100 miles away from Celtic Park, and it took place at Old Trafford on the 12th of December 1984. After Roy Aitken hit the post, Rapid broke up the pitch and scored to win 1-0. Two Rapid players were attacked on the field by pitch invaders and UEFA responded by ordering Celtic's next match to be played behind closed doors. There were so many procedural and other inconsistencies involved in UEFA's handling of the issue, but that's for another time. Being paired with Atletico Madrid at the best of times brings back memories of the infamous 1974 European Cup semi-final where through sheer thuggery they ensured a scoreless first leg at Celtic Park but this had to be put to the side for the first round ties. Despite Celtic generally underachieving in Europe in the 1980s, they did achieve some notable results and the first leg against Atletico Madrid on the 18th of September 1985 was one of those. Davy Hay getting his tactics spot on and a second half Morris Johnston header secured a 1-1 draw, putting Celtic in the unfamiliar situation of being in a winning position at the beginning of a second leg home tie. An expensive security operation was put in place to meet the closed door requirements, with even the Celtic Park car park out of bounds to fans on UEFA's orders. The loss of an expected £250,000 gate meant that this particular European campaign actually cost Celtic money to participate in. There was much speculation beforehand about how the tie would be affected by the empty terraces and stand and Celtic playing without the backing of their traditional 12th man in the shape of the formidable Celtic Park atmosphere. Ian Paul, writing in the Glasgow Herald of the 2nd of October, saw a silver lining. As their manager Davy Hay said yesterday, if we had been playing a normal return with a big crowd at Parkhead, I would have been really confident of going through. As it is, the absence of the supporters must take a little from our confidence. Paul continued, Conversely, the lack of the enormous backing Celtic usually receive could give the team an unconsidered advantage in that the pressure from the support can, and has in the past, forced players into reckless abandon in the search for goals. This time, they can play it sensibly, as they like, without fear of crowd impatience. At 2pm, in the middle of an eerily quiet stadium, Celtic lined up Bonner, McGrain, Burns, Aitken, McGugan, Grant, Proven, McStay, Johnston, McLeod, McClare. Subs, Latchford, McAdam, O'Leary, McAnally, Archdeacon. Having played so well in Madrid and being on a good run of form, this turned out to be one of Celtic's most dispiriting performances in a long time. Ian Paul reported in the Glasgow Herald on the 3rd of October, Celtic tiptoed out of Europe after one of their most depressing performances of this or any other season during which the empty eeriness of Parkhead provided an apt backcloth for their meek exit from the European Cup Winners' Cup. It would be easy to suggest that being forced to play behind closed doors in this first round return tie contributed greatly to Celtic's demise. It is indeed probably true, but it remains inexplicable that a team of such professional skill could perform so ineptly even in a practice game, which this evidently was not. It might have turned out differently. Atletico had spurned several good chances before on 36 minutes, Murdo McLeod, from a Peter Grant pass, 
hit the bar with a first time shot from only a few yards out. Three minutes later, Atletico scored with a 20 yard shot from Seti in after the ball broke fortuitously to him from Tommy Burns. At this stage, a goal for Celtic would have levelled the tie and they improved slightly in the second half but rarely threatened and Atletico gave them a mountain to climb when Kike added a second with 19 minutes left. Two minutes later, Roy Aitken, pushed into midfield when Tom McAdam replaced Paul McStay, flicked home a cutback from Brian McClare to give Celtic a flicker of hope. But with another two goals now required, it was too little too late and the match petered out without further incident. The bottle thrower from the previous season, whoever he was, cost Celtic not only the quarter-final place they had won on the field in 1984-85, but probably cost them the Atletico Madrid tie as well. Frustratingly, both Rapid and Atletico reached and lost the final of the competition after knocking Celtic out. The Dynamo Kiev team that beat Atletico in the 1986 final were special, but Celtic could have given the 1985 winners, Everton, a closer run for their money than Rapid did. The Rapid and Atletico ties taken together, the good, the bad and the ugly, were Celtic's 1980s in Europe in microcosm. <laughs>